Welcome to EM Cases Rapid Reviews, where we review the take-home points from the EM Cases main episode podcasts so you can ace your exams and take stellar care of your patients. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Claridge, and welcome to another edition of Emergency Medicine Cases Rapid Review. Today, we're going to get you through part two of hyponatremia, where we expand and apply some of the principles from part one. In this video, we're going to take a look at the dreaded complications of hyponatremia so that you can see them coming. We will also apply our principles to a couple cases that you don't want to miss. Before we get started, let's review the five core principles from last time. First, you're going to want to treat neurological emergencies. Second, defend the intravascular volume. Third, prevent worsening of the hyponatremia. Fourth, prevent rapid overcorrection by the rule of 100s. And finally, get to the cause. This approach is helping us to both recognize the complications of hyponatremia and prevent against them. So what are those complications that we're talking about? We had touched them briefly. Mortality from hyponatremia comes from two main complications, cerebral edema and osmotic demyelination syndrome. The cerebral edema is a result of undercorrection of the sodium and overcorrection leads to the osmotic demyelination syndrome. It is a balance and one that our five core principles strives to maintain. When hypotonic fluid has its way with the brain, we get cerebral edema. There are two main factors that influence how symptomatic a patient will be. One, the severity of the hyponatremia, and two, the acuity of onset. The lower the sodium and the faster the fall, the more symptomatic the patient will be. You should suspect this in patients with an altered level of consciousness and those who have had a severe or rapid lowering of the sodium. To help us come to the diagnosis, we can also use ultrasound by looking at the optic disc diameter, and a CT scan can sometimes help us by looking for effacement. How are we going to treat this? Think back to the core principles. This is a neurological emergency and requires hypertonic saline. On the other side of the scale is osmotic demyelination syndrome, a devastating condition that can occur after rapid overcorrection of the sodium. It is a clinical diagnosis with a delayed presentation of up to seven days. Symptoms vary by which anatomic structures of the brain demyelinate. Most commonly affects the pons, hence why it was previously known as central pontine myelinolysis, but it can also affect the cerebellum or basal ganglia or cranial nerves. Now there are certain people who are at higher risk, so keep these in mind. Those are your elderly patients who are malnourished, who have chronic severe hyponatremia and also have hypokalemia. What happens when you get a repeat sodium level back that is dramatically higher than expected? A true oh hell moment. The solution is simple. Fall back on those core principles. Start with defending the intravascular volume. Next, prevent the sodium from increasing any further. Fluid restrict and stop all IV fluids. The next step is to give DDAVP one mic IV to put on the brakes. Lastly, you can also consider a nephrology consult in these cases. It all comes down to these steps. There are some situations where you have to resist the instinct to just give fluids. I'll quickly show you these. There are a special group of people who can run marathons. Now they can become very hyponatremic and it's called exercise associated hyponatremia. But it's not by the mechanism that you would think. It results from drinking more free water than are we were able to clear at the kidneys. The cognitive trap here is to assume the symptoms and the electrolyte disturbances are a result of dehydration given their exercise history. But it's not. Don't assume that dehydration is the cause. You need to fluid restrict these patients. The next group is a group of patients we see every day in the emergency department. The patient has taken some pill. They're not sure what that might have been. It may have had an M on it and they present to the emergency department vomiting and tachycardic. The reflexive maneuver is to give a fluid bolus, but what might have been happening is that they just might have been pounding back free water, and the ecstasy they have taken has now caused SIADH, so they can potentially be very hyponatremic. The other group that this can happen to are those psychotic patients ingesting large quantities of free water who are on SSRIs. Keep both these patient groups in mind and avoid the cognitive traps. Let's quickly recap what we've reviewed today. We're trying to avoid the two major complications, cerebral edema and osmotic demyelination syndrome. 
Keep in mind those patients who might be hyponatremic and resist the urge to give them fluids. And finally, always go back to the core principles. That's all for hyponatremia. Thank you for listening and see you again next time. Thank you.